Welcome back to another video. Today is a Toyota video. Quick update on my Toyota life. So I haven't been updating you guys on my rigs for the last month now. Let me give you guys a quick refresh. The pickup that I bought all the way in that ghost town where I did that crazy trip, I sold it. Didn't do nothing to it. I just went ahead and flipped it, made some money off of it. After that, I bought the Teal truck, which is my old pickup. Um, it blew a rod. The engines were seized up. That's the one we're doing at 3-4. And that other, that following day, I bought a clean 4Runner. You guys remember the 4Runner? I bought that one. I went ahead and traded that to another Toyota head, and he was able to build something for me. So easy, easy work on that. And then I recently bought that 22RE 94 pickup. That's strictly a parts truck. Uh, right now, I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. I don't really want to do anything to it right now. I don't want to remove the doors or anything like that. It's winter time. I don't want to do nothing to it. So that's an update. Last couple days, last couple weeks, I've been building the 3-4 motor. It's pretty much ready. We're dropping that in today. I want to drop it in tonight. And then in the meanwhile, I have another truck, the 94 pickup, which is not mine. It's another, uh, it's another client. He has a 3.0 with that blue head gasket, and he wants me to do a rebuild. Uh, last couple days I've been working on it. It's pretty much done. It just needs a few more things and then we can go ahead and drop this into his truck and then he also wants some suspension components changed out. So that's a quick 401 on what's going on today. So tonight The teal truck we're doing the teal truck tonight on the teal truck I have everything in the engine bay all prepped up already. We just need to switch out the throwout bearing use a 3.0 throwout bearing i want to put a new one just because the old one there looks old and i always recommend putting new ones because it's all the way in there why not just switch it out so we have a new throwout bearing i always install this last and then the uh clutch the master slave, slave cylinder for the clutch i'm gonna go ahead and replace it this part is only like 20 bucks this is an asin brand it's only 20 bucks so why not switch it out i can still switch it switch this out even with the nj nj already dropped in but it's much easier to do this uh, to replace these parts once the engine's out. So I'm gonna put these two parts in real quick and then we'll go ahead and drop in that motor. Once we drop in that motor, there's a few things we have to do still before we can start it up. We gotta build exhaust and all that fancy stuff. I wanna build some new wires for it, the positive wire and the so wire for the alternator to uh, the starter to the alternator fuse. I'm still waiting on some parts of that. But for the most part, let's go and get right into it. So a quick look at the 3.0, it's pretty much ready. We're not gonna install it. Uh, we're not gonna install the upper manifold because the wire harness is still in the truck So we have to drop this <coughs> engine the way it is right now put the harness on it and then install the rest of the top end But we did a full complete um, Top end rebuild all new gasket oil pump fan clutch timing build overall kit all that fun stuff Everything's been clean heads been resurfaced oil cooler um, Kept the oil cooler because the customer wants it and then all new hoses you want to go with all new hoses for the coolant and the oil. This is my 3-4 truck. This 3-4 has all new fresh parts, fresh everything. John did the harness for me. John also went ahead and did the crossover. So lots of good stuff on this engine. Uh, brand new clutch. This is a LUK clutch. Luke with flywheel and all that fun stuff. Pretty much ready to go. So let's go ahead and drop it in. It's nighttime right now or it's like it's, like, it's dark outside. And it's cold outside, so we're gonna do our best to uh, get this engine in. A little downsize about having a one car garage, you can't do too much into it. So, my garage is filled up, the vehicles are outside, but it's all good. I am used to working outside, guys. A lot of people don't know, but you know, I used to live in a trailer park and I worked outside on all my rigs, so I'm built tough, I'm built different. Let's go ahead and remove the hood real quick just so it'll make it easier. I see a little bit of snow right now, so hopefully, it doesn't snow right now. I checked the weather, the weather is like. I don't mind the cold, but as long as it doesn't start pouring snow. Oh, I got some gas, I guess. I think my wife has some guests over, I'm not sure. All right, let's remove this hood real quick. Okay, so throwout bearing is right there and then also the slave sender is right there or the master slave sender for the clutch. It's really easy to do. I'm just gonna pull it out real quick and do it. When you guys are doing this swap on a 3-4, you keep the same throwout bearing that was made for the tranny. So we don't ever mess with the tranny. Tranny stays the same. So that means we use the 3-0 throw throwout bearing. You don't, have to you don't have to replace it, but why not? If you don't know the record of it, might as well do it while you're in there. Make sure you know the orientation of how it goes in. So this is the way the springs are back in the way. <coughs> you can see this one's all rusted out and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't spin freely. So this one's most likely shot 
and then this is the so just take a look at it make sure it's the same so it went in this way so that means it's gonna have to go in that way so see how much this one is more smoother see that right there see how easy that spin and this one here is not well this one's spinning but you can see it's not smooth this is a koyo brand and i bet you this is in a koyo i bet you this is a different brand so this way the spring goes in that way guys new throttle bearing install i'm gonna go ahead and spray that clean it up a little bit um, and then put some of that uh, grease on those splines makes them go easier and then also the new slave uh, cylinder down there we'll have to go ahead and bleed that out later on but that's not a big deal so everything's ready to go got some lubrication on that spline we're gonna go ahead and do the install guys this is gonna be fun a few things you want to check first is you want to remove that dust shell right here there's a heat shell on the frame there's a heat shell back there that you gotta pound back disconnect the fuel line the rubber hose line to the hard line we've been using the three four and then i modified the uh e one the breather line um so just make sure you prep the engine bay i made videos already on what to do what to prep it it's a bit dirty but for the most part i'm not worried about it this is going to be a off-road rig um and then also this truck came with the round plug for the alternator it came with the round plugs and then i went ahead and cut that off and used the oval plugs because the oval plugs are the new ones so you want to do that while you have the engine bay open so it's easier to do your soldering and stuff like that so i also made it a little bit longer than normal too just to make it more easier but for the most part we are ready unfortunately i can't wash it or degrease it which is what i would do if i was in, if it was a winter to your time but we'll go ahead and get the engine ready and drop it in it's a bit snowing, but uh, I think I should be able to push this out here. I try to keep my um, I try to keep my driveway as clean as possible. So whenever there's like any snow, any snowfall, I went ahead and swept it right away so that the uh, my concrete here is nice and clean. This is my engine hoist that I've been using for the last years. Um, but I never own one of these right here. This is a engine leveler and my one of my Toyota buddies had it had it because he was doing an engine swap So he bought this and I was I borrowed it and I think this will make the 3-4 going in more easier because last time Whenever I was trying to get the 3-4 motor in I would always spend like at least an hour trying to fight it in because it's so hard to get it lined up properly So I'm hoping that this helps if this helps I might buy myself one So we want to make sure the engine faces this way this engine has been ready for the last couple of days. It's just that the last couple of days we've been getting snow at and I finally have a window break. So I want to get this motor, at least want to get it bolted in there so that I, I can get it out of my garage and then start doing things little by little. I might have to readjust it. It's not high enough guys. Oh yeah, it's too long. No, we might be able to get in there. It's maxed out because of that extension that we're using. Should be good enough to get in there, guys. It barely clears it. Like I said, if you're doing this for your first time, it's gonna have at least a couple people, but it's just myself. I don't have any friends. No friends to help me. Barely clears, it barely clears the oil pan. Oh, we still got more room to go up. Oh yeah, I love this freaking uh, engine hoist. Just barely, guys, look at that. Barely in there. There we go. All right, so we're inside the engine bay. I'm trying to drop it slowly. Nice and slow. We're gonna have to back it out a little bit. Watch your hands when it goes down, comes down. Don't install the radiator, don't install the fan or nothing like that. I installed the fan clutch, but don't install your fan. You don't want to damage it. Watch out for that throttle cable. It's getting hung up right here. And you want to keep eyes on everything the front the side look at the back make sure nothing's coming out 
So right now we need to push it back a little bit more. So let me double check guys. Yep, we need to come back a little bit more. I'm hoping it goes in smooth guys, because every time I do this, it never goes in smooth. Nice, okay. Let me push it back. Oh, I should have I should have kept the fan clutch out, guys. This fan clutch is not giving us enough clearance. Slowly, slowly. So next time, don't install the fan clutch. It gives you a little bit more clearance. So the hardest part is trying to get this um, the clutch to go in and then um, eat that output spline. That's the hardest part. We're hung up on something. The back is getting hung up on. Huh? <clears throat> so usually and usually that's the trick you got to jack up that tranny so the bell housing is shooting at an angle and then the engine will slide in and then you drop it like that it's all about the mangoes you might want to also remove your windshield reservoir too that might break very tricky guys you might be jacking higher jack that tranny higher the goal is to get this motor in, guys. Not get it running tonight. I want to get it in. Get it in. It's just hitting that output shaft. So the engine needs to tilt more, the engine needs to tilt more this way so that it can slide in. I got the engine barely in. It's uh, sitting on the engine mounts right now, but it needs to be pushed back like half an inch. So I just got to do some wiggle so I can get it lined up, but it took me about another 15 minutes after I shut off that last clip. Really no secret, you just gotta wiggle, wiggle, play around. Make sure you don't hit anything important. The heater hosing. Finally, I think after an hour or so, I think after an hour of wiggling, jiggling this thing here, I finally got it in. So I was able to get the driver mount bolted on and then I got about uh, the bill housing and then the engine this close and I was able to squeeze them. I was able to squeeze them together by what I like to do is I always try to put some bolts for the bill housing bolts. I try to shoot them in and that would squeeze them together. So that's what I like to do. And I was able to finally do that. And it's lined up so the two, um, all the motor mounts are pre-bolted pre, uh, pre in. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop the motor now and tighten it up. And then after that, I'm going to bolt, bolt the bell housing, put the hood on, and then now I can start buttoning everything up. But so far, so far, it's always frustrating. It always takes at least an hour. So I'm still perfecting the whole get it in, get it out. Getting it out is pretty easy, but getting in is tricky. You don't want to damage anything. And you want to make sure that everything goes in smooth and doesn't get clunker up. So we're good. Okay, everyone, I've been working on this engine for about an hour and a half now. I didn't film anything at all. It's getting really cold right now and I've just been butting up as much thing as I did. So I'm just gonna do a quick rundown. I went ahead and added oil already just because just I don't want the internal or the engine being empty with it being cold outside. 3.4, it takes 530, 5 weight 30. You can do 1030 if you want. I'm, I'm just running 5 weight 30. There's some cheap oil from AutoZone. So it takes about 5.5 quarts. My first initial runs when I do th when I do swaps or any engine is I like to run one quart of Marvel Mystery and then the rest of the oil. And then the first 500 miles, I like to flush it out. And then the cooling system, I like to try to flush the cooling system after a thousand miles or you know something like that um, just to get all that gunk out as well. Went ahead and installed the uh, brake booster, uh, brake booster hose right here. You can use the 3.0. You, um, you can use the 3.0 hoses, the stock one, and it's perfect because you can, um, it's long, but it has all the right curves, so you just cut it to the right length. Uh, make sure that when you install the brake booster check valve, 
um, it goes in one particular way so make sure you have it facing the right way in the daytime and then I'll go ahead and button up the bell housing but for the most part that's pretty easy to do and then I also still have to install the starter and after that install the front end um, the radiator the fan shroud and then we're also doing the toy only swap battery tray the evap and then after that um, pretty much the intake manifold the air box that's easy that's all easy to do um, I hooked up the fuel line already so make sure you hook up the fuel line um, the power steering lines are hooked up but I haven't torqued it down yet so the big bolt that goes to the power steering make sure you torque that down so I haven't torqued that down yet so I gotta make sure make sure I do that um, just added oil and all that stuff the fuel return line there's a long fuel return line I have it routed over here I haven't put it in yet because it's really cold right now and the hose is like that hold is like um, this fuel line hose is hardened right now so I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow I'll go ahead and heat it up a little bit so it will slip in easier so that's pretty much it pretty easy the <laughs> throttle cable um, this plate right here needs to be bent bent slightly this way so I'll go ahead and do that tomorrow morning when I have everything all adjusted but for the most part it's pretty easy the uh, the most time consuming thing out of all this now is going to be the exhaust so after I'm done with all this stuff right here um, once I have everything in the engine bay buttoned up um, I'll go ahead and start working on the exhaust the down pipe is pretty I mean it's easy to do it just takes more time yeah I, I know I'm going to spend at least an hour and a half just doing that but for the most part I want to get everything on the top in the engine bay done first so I think we'll go ahead and conclude this video I hope you guys enjoy I'll keep you guys updated um, I'll probably go ahead and make another video once I get everything buttoned up and then we'll go ahead and do a first start Hopefully by this week or so we should be able to do a first start as soon as I get that exhaust done And everything is plugged everything is here already all the parts are here. We're not waiting for anything right now, so Pretty stoked. We should have a first start in the next couple days So make sure you guys stay tuned watch the Instagram netty new underscore 44 is cold. I'll see you guys next time night. Bye. Bye